Hey everyone, Mr. Magatash here, and Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.6.8 update is here. In this video, we're going to go over all the changes and fixes in this release, along with going over some big news like the macOS Sonoma beta support and the macOS Ventura 13.5 issue on some 2011 Macs that we went over in my 13.5 video. And we have four separate demos here today. We're going to show you if it's safe to install on macOS Big Sur, macOS Monterey, macOS Ventura, how to fix that issue on 2011, and then we're going to walk through a full demo demo on how to install and update the latest version on OpenCore Legacy Patcher. You're going to want to stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. Right, let's go over a quick overview of the 0.6.8 update with some of the main features of the update. First of all, let's talk about this release and the macOS Sonoma beta that just came out last week. So if you want to check that out for macOS Sonoma, you can take a look at my macOS Sonoma beta for OpenCore Legacy Patcher's video. I'll give you a full walkthrough on how to install that, but I want to make sure you understand that even though these versions are different, for example, you have to go to the special preview page for macOS Sonoma to get the beta. And I'll show you that link. This is the special page that you have to go to to be able to get the latest validated builds. So if you for example, think that 0.6.8 on the main line supports Sonoma, it does not. And that's why it says Mac OS Sonoma is in full development right now and will be released later this year for full support. So that's why you cannot install the main line update for Mac OS Sonoma. It is only for Mac OS Big Sur, Monterey, and Ventura right now. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about some new features. So one of the great new features of 0.6.8 is the integration of AMFI Pass for root patch machines. So what does this mean? This means that if you have to install the root patches, which is basically on almost every single macOS Ventura device, AMFI has to be disabled because of a previous macOS Ventura update. So what is AMFI? Well, if you go to the Eclectic Light Company blog run by Howard Oakley, and this is one of my favorite blogs, he talks about AMFI and what it is. It stands for Apple Mobile File integrity so what that does is it provides an extra layer of security but unfortunately that had to be disabled because of an in incompatibility on a Ventura update with 0.6.8 that is now enabled again so let's take a quick look at that if we go to our 2011 root patch machine, you'll see that disable AMFI is disabled by default in the security tab of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. But after installing the 0.6.8 update and installing the root patches again, AMFI will be enabled again and you'll have that extra security. So that's a wonderful fix for OpenCore Legacy Patcher. The next is the macOS Ventura 13.5 issue. If you watch my macOS Ventura 13.5 update video, I went over the the issue here at the end of the video that I had with my 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro. And then I walked you through how to do a revert of the patches in recovery to be able to boot the Mac back up to be able to fix the issue. And we'll go over that when we get to the walkthroughs and show you how to install to fix that 2011 MacBook Pro. And under that fix, there was an additional note here that resolves a display profile issue for these particular HD 3000 graphics. So that's another great fix. There's another one where it adds the 10 gigabit ethernet network card support for pre Ivy Ridge Max and Monterey and newer. Now that we cover the main highlights in the 0.6.8 update, now let's go over to some of the main issues on the change log. Now, before we get to the full change log, this is a great time to mention the Open Core Legacy Patcher Open Collective donation page. If you didn't see me talk about this before, this is a nice new site that the developers put together that you can contribute to the project to be able to donate to hardware and all kinds of different things. There's over 77 different models of Mac hardware that the Open Core Legacy Patcher developers have to support for Mac OS Big Sur, Mac OS Monterey, Mac OS Ventura, and Mac OS Sonoma. So you can see see the issues here. Now, when they test these different Macs, if they had that hardware on hand, they can test it immediately and it helps out so much. So there's different ways that you can donate here. There's already been a ton of people donating, which is absolutely wonderful to see. And you can also donate a one-time donation or you can do like a small reoccurring contribution. So take a look at that if you're interested in supporting the OpenCore Legacy Patcher developers. Now for the changelog, there's some great fixes in the changelog this time. And it talks more about that HD 3000 
2000 issue, for example, the profile support. If you've had the 2011 MacBook Pro, for example, with the HD 3000, you would notice some black boxes and that was fixed by downgrading the color sync, but that's actually fixed in here. So you don't have to do that anymore. There's also some improvements in the experimental menu bar implementation and stability improvements. There's also an implement reduce transparency menu bar option. Now we talked about last time the new Open Core Legacy Patcher update system. For example, when you start Open Core Legacy Patcher now and you are on a previous version, you will see a new way to be able to update to the latest version, which makes it really simple. So you do not have to go out to the GitHub and download it manually anymore. All you do is open it up and it'll automatically check for updates as soon as it starts and it will show you the latest version that is available. So for example, this is on 0.6.7 and the new version is 0.6.8. Now when you download and install this, though what will happen is is the application is stored in the library application support dirtania folder open core legacy patcher now if you drag your full app to the applications folder but what would happen is is that now you'd have two different applications one here and then one in applications and what needs to be there is an alias that is fixed and we're going to go over that later because i did cover this in the last video but i want to make sure you're clear on this with the new video so you don't have any issues with that Initially, it talks about the 10 gigabit Ethernet card update here. There was another note here on an AMD Vega support issue that was fixed. Also, the disable of non metals menu bar 2 configuration that was causing some issues that can be manually re enabled. However, the application will try to disable to prevent issues. The open core version is still 0.9.2, so that has not changed. And again, we went over that. All you need to do is run this command here to be able to see an MVRAM. And inside the application itself, you can now see the version of open core when you go under the settings option here and then click on app and then all you need to do is scroll down here and you can see the version of open core release 092 and the date of 5 8 2023 uh, let's jump right into the demos here. Is it safe to install 0.6.8 with macOS Big Sur, the latest update, 11.7.9 it is. This late 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro is running both very well, everything is running great, and the update installed perfectly. No problems with good old Mac OS Big Sur. Our next demonstration system here was a 2012 mid 15 inch MacBook Pro and we are running Mac OS Monterey 12.6.8 and Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.6.8. Again, both installs went good with no issues and it's running very well. Mac OS Monterey is still the main workhorse that a lot of people are still on. What I want to do is talk a little bit about the stability of Mac OS Ventura next. Now let's talk about 0.6.8 on Mac OS Ventura. 13.5. Now you heard me talk about the 2011 HD 3000 issue. We're going to go over that next after this one, but everything went okay on the install for the metal compatible Mac for the 2015 MacBook Pro. No problems on the post install root patches or on the open core version on release 0.9.2. So everything is a okay on this device. But I wanted to talk about the stability of Mac OS Ventura. A lot of you have been asking, is Ventura stable enough to make the jump to and as we saw with the issue with 2011 apple is still making changes to the operating system so if you wanted to be totally secure wait a little bit until it goes into security update mode when mac os sonoma comes out because mac os big sur and mac os monterey have had barely any issues for the last couple of months once it goes into security mode they're just passing security issues and usually not as many operating system things that could cause problems with the patcher so that's just something to keep in mind again for a lot of people ventura is working very well and will continue to work very well but that's just my thought on that situation okay now it's time for our live demo we're going to go over three different things in this live demo first we're going to show you how to download and install the latest version of 0.6.8 we're also going to talk about that alias issue with the automatic patcher with the either the full app in your applications folder or if it's in the application support folder then we're going to show you how to fix this 2011 system with the hd 3000 issue that i had to walk back and revert the patches in recovery you can see the doc is not transparent so this machine is not have the root patches installed it's running a little bit slower and we need to get this thing fixed with the latest version of 0.6.8 so we can have full acceleration again well, in your applications folder fire up open core legacy patcher 
And if you're running the last few versions of Open Core Legacy Patcher, you'll have the new automatic patching system. And you can tell right away if you have that because it says download and install. If it only says view on GitHub here, that means you have an older version. You're going to have to download it again, move it to applications, and then you'll be able to have and take advantage of the new automatic update and install system in the future. All you need to do here is click download and install. It's going to download 0.6.8 and we'll be ready to go on the new version. But again, that's only step one. Now I kept the application Dortania folder open here so we can take a look at the date modified. This is the absolute location of where Open Core Legacy Patcher keeps this application in the library application Dortania folder. And you'll see this update here with the modified and then it'll put a new alias in applications. And we'll let this extract here and we can watch this date modified. Give it a second here and we'll enter it in our administrator password. And there it is today. So we've got that all fixed now. What we need to do is we need to now check the applications folder because it should have the new alias in there. So let's click on applications and we have our alias. Now let's take a look at the about this application alias and we can see that it does point to the proper location. Library application support open patcherapp Let's say that you had downloaded it manually. You download it from GitHub, you moved it from downloads to your applications folder, you wouldn't have the alias. It would just be the full app. But what 0.6.8 will do now and in the future is if it detects the full app, it will create the alias so you don't have to worry anymore. Then you'll only have one application in the proper place and just an alias that will point back to the proper location. So you should have no issues. So this is how it should look. Now that we've got the alias issue out of the way that says the update was successful, you've been updated to this version of 0.6.8 and it automatically says, do you want to install the latest version of Open Core? onto your EFI partition and install the root volume patches with the latest version of 0.6.8. So yes, we're going to go through both of those all in one shot. So we're going to click on yes. And now it's going to install OpenCore 0.9.2 to your EFI partition. We're going to click install to disk. We'll click on the disk zero, which is our main hard drive and the main EFI partition. We need to enter in our administrator password to mount it. Okay, and we'll see it mount over here for a second. And there it is. It installs it and then it unmounts it. Success. Now it's gonna bring us directly to the next part. It says, would you also like to install the latest version of 0.8, 0.6.8 root patches for acceleration? Yes, we do. Now it's going to tell you what it's going to install for this 2011, the Terrascale 2 and the Intel Shady Bridge, and then the legacy keyboard backlight. Let's click start root patching. And yes, we need to enter in our administrator password. Okay. And there we go. It's already found the KDK that is compatible and it's going to use that if it needed a new KDK because it was out of date, for example, 13.5.1 or 13.6, you'll see the downloading section right here, but we're A-OK -okay for this because we have a compatible version. Now it's rebuilding the kernel cache. So this is going to fix this 2011. Now, again, I, after talking about the whole alias issue, it might be confusing to you. But just to review, the main Open Core Legacy Patcher application, the, the storage, the main place where it's going to always be is your hard drive, library, application support, Dortania, and that's where the app will be. And as long as in the applications folder, you have the alias like this, you are good to go for the future and you don't have to worry about anything else. Again, it's a little bit confusing. And if you have any questions on this situation, let me know in the comments below. So let's close this application. As well. And there we go. Reboot to apply. The root patcher has finished successfully. Would you like to reboot? Now we'll click on reboot and then we will click on restart. And look at that beautiful transparent dock. We are good to go and fixed with our early 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro with our HD 3000. We have our latest version of Open Core on our EFI here, 0.9.2. And we can open up Open Core Legacy Patcher to make sure that we have the latest version available of the root patches. We'll open back up 
and we can click on install root patches. All patches are already installed, the version and the date that it was last patched. Now, remember when I talked about earlier about the AMFI issue? All we need to do now to verify that is to go back into settings and then click on the security tab and look at that. Disable AMFI now is not checked. So we have full library validation enabled again. That is a wonderful fix and a security feature. Developers want all the security protections that can be possibly enabled that can still have the system run properly. It was only disabled because it wasn't working, but the developers worked on a wonderful fix to be able to fix AMFI, and that's a fantastic fix. Sorry for the lateness of this video. I always try to get the update videos out as quick as possible, but I was out of town when 0.6.8 came out, so there's definitely a delay here on the updates. I know a lot of you wait until I come out with a video before you update and that's totally fine and i try to get them out as fast as possible because i know when an update comes out you are eager to jump in and test it out to make sure it runs right and get to the latest version so thank you for that and if you have any questions on this update let me know in the comments below and i'll catch you in the next video thanks